Hello and welcome to India's News live from Islamabad. I'm Jawad Tehami and these are the headlines. In Afghanistan, at least eight people have been killed in a suicide attack on the governor of eastern Lagman province. Interior Ministry spokesman Tariq Aryan said the governor and 28 others were injured in the attack. The governor's spokesman said Rahmatullah Yermal was targeted when he was on his way to office. Turkey's defense ministry says Azerbaijan has liberated 22 settlements from the Armenian occupation amid ongoing fighting in the Upper Karabakh. Armenian officials say 21 more soldiers have been killed in fresh clashes with Azerbaijan, raising the death toll to 223. Early Azerbaijan accused Armenia of launching missile attacks on civilians in different cities. The United Nations has expressed concern over the continuing cases of sexual violence against women and girls in India. In a statement, the UN said subcaste Hindus are extremely vulnerable and are at great risk of gender-based violence in India. The coronavirus cases Delhi has surpassed 35 million, while the virus has claimed over 1 million lives worldwide. U.S. President Donald Trump remains under observation in a military hospital after making a brief public appearance to greet supporters. Meanwhile, India has registered over 900 deaths and nearly 75,000 cases overnight, taking infections Delhi to over 6.6 .6 million. Here in Pakistan, the virus has claimed four more lives overnight, taking the death toll to 6,517. Two American and one British-born scientists have won the 2020 Nobel Prize for Medicine. The Nobel Assembly at Sweden's Karolinska Institute said the scientists have been awarded for their work in identifying the hepatitis C virus. The scientists have also won the prize of 1.1 million US dollars. Those were the headlines and detailed stories right after a short break. Welcome back and now for the news in detail. In Afghanistan, at least eight people have been killed in a suicide attack on the governor of eastern Lagman province. Interior Ministry spokesman Tariq Aryan said the governor and 28 others were injured in the attack. Aryan said four guards of the governor and four civilians were among those killed. The governor's spokesman said Rahmatullah Yirmal was targeted when he was on his way to office. No group has yet claimed the responsibility for the attack. Meanwhile, the Taliban said six Afghan policemen were killed in a mine explosion in the Neher Saraj district of Helmand province. The group spokesperson Kari Ahmadi said the blast occurred when the Afghan forces targeted the Taliban belt in Mukhtar Kala area. Turkey's defense ministry says Azerbaijan has liberated 22 settlements from the Armenian occupation amid ongoing fighting in Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenian officials say 21 more soldiers have been killed in fresh clashes with Azerbaijan, uh, raising the death toll to 223. Earlier, Azerbaijan accused Armenia of launching missile attacks on civilians in different cities. The both sides have claimed hundreds of civilian and military casualties in nine days of fighting over the disputed region. The conflict threatens to drag in other regional powers as Azerbaijan is supported by Turkey, while Armenia has a defense pact with Russia. The United Nations has expressed concern over the continuing cases of sexual violence against women and girls in India. In a statement, the UN said subcaste Hindus are extremely vulnerable and are greater risk of gender-based violence in India. It said the recent cases of alleged rape and murder in Hathras and Balrampur are another reminder of the atrocities on women in the country. 
The UN has said it is essential that the BJP government ensures that the perpetrators are brought to justice speedily. It also stressed that families of subcaste Hindus should also be empowered to seek timely justice, social support, counseling, health care and rehabilitation. At least two Indian troops have been killed in an attack in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Officials say three others were injured in the Pulwama attack. In a statement, officials said a contingent of the Indian paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force came under the attack in Pampore area. They said the injured troops were shifted to hospital, where two of them later succumbed to injuries. The officials said the area has been sealed off immediately after the attack and a search operation has been launched. Two rockets have fallen near Baghdad's heavily fortified Green Zone, which houses diplomatic missions in Iraq. In a statement, Iraq's armed forces said no one was killed or seriously injured in the attack. It said one of the two Katyusha missiles landed near the Babylon hot Hotel, which is frequently used for government meetings. Earlier, the Iraqi authorities detained several individuals involved in missile attacks on Baghdad airport and the Green Zone. The U.S. has also threatened to shut down its embassy in Baghdad if the attacks continue. Russia says it is ready to sell its advanced anti-ballistic missile defense system S-400 to Iran. Russian ambassador to Iran, Levan Zagarian, said Moscow can deliver the S-400 system to Tehran once the U.N. embargo expires. Zagarian said Moscow has sold the S-300 system to Tehran in the past and now it has no problem with the delivery of its upgraded model. He said Moscow does not fear Washington's threats against the sale of the weapons to Iran. He added Moscow can also consider other proposals from Iran on arms purchases. Moscow delivered the S-300 to Tehran after the signing of the 2015 Iran nuclear deal that restricted its nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. Turkish President Rajab Tayyip Erdogan has reaffirmed Ankara's support for the UN-recognized government of national accord in Libya. Libyan Prime Minister Fayez al-Saraj, along with a high-level delegation, met President Erdogan and other officials in Istanbul. In a statement, the Turkish presidency said Erdogan affirmed Ankara's support to Libya's only legitimate government of Faisal Saraj. He said foreign ministers, defense ministers and finance ministers of the two countries also participated in the meeting. Earlier, President Erdogan publicly announced his opposition to PM Saraj's resignation as Libya's prime minister. Turkey says it has killed three militants of the Kurdistan Workers' Party in northern Syria near its southern border. The Defense Ministry said the militants were attempting to infiltrate into the area of Turkey's anti-terror operation in the area. It said Ankara will not allow terrorists to disturb peace and security in the Operation Peace Spring Zone in northeastern Syria. Since 2016, Turkey has launched a trio of operations across its border into northern Syria. Ankara holds the fighter group responsible for the deaths of some 40,000 people in a 30-year terror campaign. Syria says Russia's continued military presence in country is important to come to the West's influence in the region. In an interview, President Bashar al-Assad said Moscow's naval and air bases in the region played a key role in battling insurgents. Assad said before Moscow's military intervention in Syria, the country's forces were facing a dangerous situation. He said the armed opposition against his regime was directly backed by Washington and other Western powers. Moscow controls the Himimim air base and the Tartars naval facility in Syria, which is Russia's only naval foothold in the Mediterranean. In Sudan, protesters have shut down the seaport terminal and a road connecting Port Sudan city to the capital Khartoum. Demonstrators are demanding cancellation of the recent Juba peace agreement with the rebel groups. The Port Sudan Workers' Union said the deal represents a foreign agenda and does not address the concerns of the locals. The head of the union threatened that demonstrations will grow if the pact is not cancelled. 
The Sudanese government signed a peace deal with Sudan Revolutionary Front, an alliance of the nine armed groups in the country. African Union Chairperson Mustafa Kim Mehmet has welcomed the deal among Sudanese factions to end armed conflicts. In Belarus, police have arrested around 317 protesters overnight during the ongoing protests demanding President Alexander Lukashenko's resignation. Interior Ministry spokeswoman Olga Kemedanova defended the detentions, saying violation of law and order will not be accepted. Earlier, thousands of people took to the streets in Minsk for the eighth straight weekend. Security forces used water cannon to disperse the crowds. Protesters also demanded the swift release of the political prisoners. The crowd marched to the beat of drums towards detention centers where detainees were held. Unrest in Belarus was triggered by August presidential election believed to have been rigged in favor of Lukashenko. Coronavirus continues to spread across the world, surpassing 35 million cases and more than 1.03 million deaths. What in this report? Hopes of a global economic revival are dimming as COVID-19 surges in India, Latin America, Indonesia, major countries in the Western Europe and the US. New York City has announced new restrictions after emergence of coronavirus clusters. President Trump still remains under observation in a military hospital after making a brief public appearance to greet supporters. We're getting great reports from the doctors. This is an incredible hospital, Walter Reed. The work they do is just absolutely amazing, and I want to thank them all, the nurses, the doctors, everybody here. I've also gotten to meet some of the soldiers and the first responders, and what a group. Many European nations have reimposed lockdowns and other restrictions in the worst affected regions. France, Belgium, and the Netherlands have recently recorded highest daily cases. However, New Zealand has announced to lift all coronavirus restrictions, claiming the country has defeated the second wave of the disease. So, on the basis of the success and effectiveness of our elimination strategy, and on the advice of the Director General of Health, Cabinet has confirmed that Auckland will join the rest of New Zealand at Alert Level 1 from 11.59pm this Wednesday, the 7th of October. Meanwhile, India is driving COVID-19 numbers in Asia, with the infection tally passing 6.6 .6 million, the second highest in the world. The Indian Health Ministry has registered over 900 deaths and nearly 75,000 cases overnight. Despite long-standing hostility, Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro has wished his U.S. counterpart Donald Trump fast and complete recovery from COVID-19. In a briefing, Maduro expressed hope that the U.S. President will become humane and empathetic towards other nations after recovery. Maduro said President Trump wrongfully underestimated the use of the mask and the pandemic in general. Earlier, the Venezuelan president said he, along with his family, will participate in third phase of clinical trials of Russian vaccine against coronavirus. In Pakistan, four more people have died due to COVID-19 over the past 24 hours, raising the death toll to 6,417. The health ministry says 644 more tested positive overnight. It's that there are 8,907 total active cases in the country. The ministry said out of over 315,000 detected cases, more than 299,000 have recovered so far. It said over 138,000 cases have been detected in Sindh province, while over 99,000 reported in Punjab so far. The National Command and Operations Center says 88 people across the country are on ventilators. More stories to follow over right after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Two American and one British-born scientists have won the 2020 Nobel Prize for Medicine. The Nobel Committee at Sweden's Karolinska Institute said the scientists have been awarded for their work in identifying the hepatitis C virus. The Nobel Committee said the trio's work helped explain a major source of the blood-borne hepatitis that could, could, couldn't be explained by the previously discovered hepatitis A and B viruses. The committee said the work dating back to the 1970s and 80s has helped save millions of lives. The scientists have also won the prize of 1.1 million US dollars. 
The World Health Organization estimates there are over 70 million cases of hepatitis worldwide and 400,000 deaths each year. The disease is a chronic and a major cause of liver and inflammation and cancer. German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas says the COVID-19 pandemic has made the post-Brexit deal more urgent. Maas said failing to reach a deal will be irresponsible. Speaking after a meeting with the EU's chief Brexit negotiator, Michel Barnier, Heiko Maas said people on both the sides have enough to shoulder. Maas said it will be irresponsible to burden them in this position with additional problems through a no deal. There are currently a lot of open questions, and if we want to make it to the finish line, we must make quick progress in all of these open questions. A lot has happened in the past year, and it must be said that maybe more is at stake today than one year ago. The coronavirus pandemic made the discussions even more difficult, and I mean in every respect, but it also made an agreement even more urgent. Eight migrants have drowned while 12 are missing near the Horn of Africa nation of Djibouti. The International Organization for Migration said the smugglers forced the refugees off a boat. In a statement, the IOM said the remaining 14 migrants survived and are receiving medical care. The UN's migrant agency said the migrants were aiming to reach Saudi Arabia. It said all were thought to be Ethiopian and making the passage to Djibouti from Yemen to seek work in the Gulf nations. In China's most beautiful high-speed railway line, bullet trains are running at full capacity to meet the demand during the ongoing National Day holiday travel rush. China's National Day and Mid-Autumn Day overlapped this year, leading to a combined eight-day holiday, which started on October the 1st. What in this report? Bullet trains operating along China's high-speed railway spans 852 kilometers in east of the country's Anhui, Yangzhi, and Fujian provinces. These trains are running at a designed speed of 300 km per hour, shortening travel time between the two provinces to within four hours. More people are traveling on the route to enjoy the pleasant autumn weather by visiting picturesque landscapes and ancient towns. China's railway corporation said a total of 11.4 million passenger trips were made on Saturday alone. By 2019, China had the world's largest high-speed railway network with the length totaling over 35,000 kilometers. Over 2,800 pairs of bullet trains run daily, connecting over 550 cities in China and covering 33 of the country's 34 provinces. The Beijing-Shanghai high-speed train links the two mega cities, located 1,318 kilometers apart and just for 4.5 hours. And now the business updates. European stocks have advanced as jittery global markets calmed down by reports of President Trump's improving health from COVID-19. The pan-European stock 600 has gained over half a percent with oil and gas stocks, banks and autos all adding over one and a half percent. All sectors and major bourses are in positive territory. London's FTSE 100 and Frankfurt's DAX have risen over half percent. The CAC 14 Paris and Italy's FTSE MIB has also advanced close to 1%. Earlier Asian markets traded higher as well. Another well situation from around the globe. That is all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.